it's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Here's our host, Randy Wilburn. Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Randy Wilbur, and I'm excited to be with you today. I have Matt Mahalovich with me, and Matt is the trails coordinator for the city of Fayetteville, among other things. He's also a landscape architect, and Matt was kind enough to join me on the podcast. And again, I want to give a shout out to Nick and Meredith Caston for introducing me to Matt. And I had actually told those guys that I was looking to tell more stories about a lot of the outdoor activities that happen here in Northwest Arkansas. And one of the biggest activities that we have here in Northwest Arkansas is cycling. Cycling takes on a whole nother level of, of um, understanding. If you know anything about Northwest Arkansas, you know about our mountain biking expertise and the amount of mountain bike trails that we have. We also have road cycling trails. We also have gravel ride trails. We have a little bit of everything. But Matt is over the coordination of trails in Fayetteville specifically, but he's able to speak to some of the different trail experiences that we have on what we call the Razorback Greenway. So if you're not from Northwest Arkansas, we call the Razorback Greenway, think of it as the main spine of connected trails throughout Northwest Arkansas from Bella Vista at the top all the way down to Fayetteville going south. And so it's exciting. I ride the trails all the time. For those of you that listen to this podcast on a regular basis, you know I'm an avid cyclist. I spend a lot I've I've ridden hundreds, if not thousands of miles on the trails in the last X number of years that I've been here in Northwest Arkansas. And it to me, it is one of the biggest features and draws of this area. So without further ado, I want to welcome Matt Mahalovich to the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. How are you doing? Yeah, Randy, thanks so much for having me today. Absolutely. I'm absolutely. excited to share about what we've been doing with the trail system in Fayetteville and throughout the region. For Northwest sure. Arkansas. For sure. For sure. So I'd love for you just to kind of tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Give us your, as we like to call it, your superhero origin story. How did you end up here as the, the trails coordinator for the city of Fayetteville? Sure. I grew up in Springfield, Missouri and came, ended up coming to college here at the U of A. And that's where I studied landscape architecture and, and really developed a passion at that time for greenways, trails and greenways at that time. And I did my senior thesis project um, was a greenway in Springfield, Missouri, in my hometown. So kind of got my teeth cut there a little bit on that. And then when I graduated in 2001, I had an opportunity to go over to Tulsa and work for a company called Land Plan Consultants and really got a lot of good experience there about how to design and construct quality trail system okay. uh, uh, there. And so really valued that time. But there were about three years and then an opportunity came at the city of Fayetteville. And I've been at the city of Fayetteville now for 17 years. Wow. You just didn't look back. So you you enjoyed your time when you were in school here so much that you wanted to get back. Yeah. Yeah. That, it really felt like home to me. That's cool. And it does. Uh, well, it certainly I, does. I want to ask you a question because it certainly, I've been to Springfield a number of times and Springfield's about, is just due north and east of of Fayetteville, straight up uh, right past Branson. If you keep going that way, there's a number of ways to get there. You can go the highway. There's a couple of ways that you can go that are kind of behind God's back, as I like to say. But there's some easy, there's some, you know, Springfield is a great little, a great little city in the southwestern corner of the state of Missouri. But I'd be curious to know your senior thesis project, did it actually come to fruition? Did you see anything come of that? Yeah, actually, parts parts of it have been built. Okay, and it's cool. exciting to see that that cool. it came to fruition. Oh, that's nice. So I would imagine that a lot of places have looked at what Northwest Arkansas has done from a trails perspective and has said, you know, we want to do that too. Yes, I do get calls from a lot of different cities and throughout the really the country. I'm about to talk to somebody that's come from Manhattan, Kansas, and they came down here and rode and. Uh, they want me to talk to their trail committee, so oh, we're nice. setting up a next week a, a Zoom meeting to you know talk and just just share you know here's what we did to get to where we are and uh, you know I'm always trying to encourage other communities to take the steps to creating a trail systems of their own and there's certainly a lot it just seems like it's like a snowball where it just gets bigger and bigger like the 
amount of interest from the communities and and almost every community, it seems like, wants to have those kind of amenities where they can get out and enjoy nature and walk and ride their bike and walk their dogs, strollers, you know, just all those things that you can do out there. You don't understand. I, I mean, I actually live off of the Neakaska Creek Trail, which is part of the system here in Fayetteville. And it is just so nice to be able, I was on it today. I'm literally on it every day, except for Sundays, like the only day I don't work out. And so I am on it all the time. I run into friends. I run into people that I've, I've connected with in this area all the time. I mean, it's just the way that it is. And it's just, it's great to see other people out there running, to out there walking, walking their dogs, just, I mean, just having some time alone with themselves and their own thoughts. And the, the trail system affords you that, right? And, and there's just something about that. And, and you're out there with nature too. We see cranes and hawks. And I just saw like a bunch of just a whole family of cardinals this morning when I was out on the trail. I mean, you name that's it, cool. you name it, we see it. So, and that's, that's one of the beautiful things about it. So let's talk a little bit about Fayetteville specifically, and then we'll, we'll get into, I'm going to, for those of you that are not in Fayetteville, if you're in Springdale, if you're in Rogers and you're in Bentonville, hold on, I got something for you, but I do want to kind of let Matt share a little bit about kind of the genesis of how the trail project came about here in Fayetteville and what they're doing to expand it to make sure that they are connecting as many parts of the Fayetteville community as possible. Sure, Randy. Yeah, things really got started back in about 2003-ish, around that time. And that's when a, a master plan was developed for the trail system. And under that time, Mayor Cootie was our, our mayor, and he really had a vision for I think he traveled and seen other trail systems and he thought, you know, really, we can do that here. And so we got this master plan together. And what I really like about it is it's really community led to start with. So it was public workshops where people got markers and drew a line here. Like, what if a trail went down this creek corridor? You know, that'd be pretty cool. And so then that ended up developing into a plan. And then really in 2005 was instrumental to, to the city council created a crew, it's a nine member crew that's through our transportation division and they build the trail. So it's a it's city workers that that's what they do is build trail unless it's snowing and then they're on the roads plowing. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that yeah. was so instrumental in, in seeing that the plan didn't just sit on a shelf. It started getting implemented at that point in 2005. So the trail that I ride on, and I typically ride from like Mud Creek all the way around, and I jump on the main trail that takes me over by under, I actually ride under college up by Joyce, and then I keep riding around, and then yeah. it takes me down through and I don't know what that That's tunnel's Mud called. Mud Creek Trail. Right. Well, oh, Mud and Creek, the tunnel under yeah. the Fulbright Expressway exactly. near Washington Regional Medical yeah. Center. Yeah, yep. the tunnel where like once you get like halfway through that tunnel, you lose all GPS connection yeah. whatsoever because you're just like- <laughs> You're in the earth. You're in the earth, basically. <laughs> yeah. So, and then that's kind of, you know, from my house where I live on the east side of town to downtown Dixon is about seven miles. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, you know, you cross north. I mean, you cross a lot of main roads. But you do it in a safe manner. As a matter of fact, I would say that North is probably the busiest of all the streets getting down to Dixon before you actually get Dixon. It, it, it Dixon. So, yeah. And thanks for mentioning that the safety aspect of where it crosses streets. We take that really seriously in yeah. the development. And yeah. what we really want always is to have it be grade separated, which means you're going through a tunnel or a culvert or or something. And so a lot of that portion does North Street. We do have a signal there, you know. Yeah. And so in some cases. It doesn't, it's not feasible to really put in a tunnel or, or, or other reasons. We will, then we'll do a signal or we have other signals called Hawk signals that will, are just blank when they're not used. But then as soon as you push it, it starts flashing red and lets you know, and then you get, you know, get the walk signal. We've had good success with those. And, you know, and I think it's funny is, as you mentioned that even on North, as busy as North is, I think people are just fully aware that when they come down to that low point, they're just like, this is where we got to slow down. You're going to see people. Because you're going to see people. And there's no one trying to like dodge traffic or anything like that. People will wait on the side Mm -hmm. until they, you know, until they have a clear and then they go and whenever they get the signal. But I have to say, I mean, you know, growing up right outside of New York City and you know, living in Boston, I've lived in some other major cities where, you know, bikers can sometimes be the bane of existence for people in cars. I don't know that that's the case here. I mean, I know in a couple of areas where where the trail doesn't exist and I sometimes have to ride on the road and I'm, I'm fully aware, you know, that there's some big trucks passing me, some, you know, there's just a, 
This is a truck culture. So you have a lot of trucks in Northwest Arkansas, but you know, I tend to stick to the trail system as much as possible. And, but where, when I can't, I'm just very alert and aware of, as anyone should be on a bike of what's around and what my surroundings are. So. Yeah, no, I'm glad you mentioned that. It's, it's really a focus of our program is to create facilities that are comfortable for all ages and all abilities. And really, even those pieces of sharing the road is really not that comfortable for a lot of people. And right. they might not try going out there and try it because they just like, no, I can't do that. You know, so what we're trying to really focus on is building a trail like experience along a street corridor, along a road corridor, something like what we have along Old Wire. Mission Boulevard is going to be coming next to build a trail separated by green space, a green strip of grass and light poles and trees. Any of those objects kind of help you separate from traffic. So that's really kind of it's evolved almost because at first they, everybody said, well, get the bikes with the cars in the road and just paint a, a line, you know, paint a stripe. And that's a magical stripe that makes sure that nothing happens. Oh, but yeah, no. reality is and then, you know, there's there's a bit more of distracted driving out there and things like that. So it's really kind of a shift. It says, OK, what if we just build a trail separate from right. the and then uh, tr- people driving? You know, it's all all good. Yeah. And people are enjoying the, the trail like experience. And we're we're tapping into that all ages. So if it's all ages, k- kids and, and the whole rate. Yeah. Well, you know, and it's cool. I'm, I know that like traffic engineers measure and count traffic. I'm curious to know when you guys built the trails, did you think it would be used the way that it is now? I mean, there's just I mean, I know before I, I remember the before and after of Old Wire because I live near Old Wire and what that looked like before you built that. There wasn't anything. Yeah, it was a ditch and there wasn't anything before that. Now you have you know, these beautiful, really wide, they look like wide sidewalks, but they're wide trails, essentially, that direct traffic in both direction for people walking, running, or cycling. And it's just, everybody uses them. I mean, that's, that's that in, in a nutshell, everybody uses them. But I'm curious to know, are as many people using the trail as you thought would use it once you built it? Was it like a field of dreams? If you build it, they will come? <laughs> yeah, we've used that saying, you know, if you build it, they will come. Early on, we did get complaints sort of or criticism saying, well, why would we spend so much money on this? Nobody's going to use it. And so, I mean, we didn't know, you know, early days, if, but then gosh, as soon as, you know, and as soon as we start getting some down, even a good sign is we'll have gravel, you know, not even paved yet. Yeah. And you see all these tire tracks in it, you know, and that, that happens almost every trail we build before we can get it paved or on it. And so... I would say it's more than I expected, though. Even those times I was like, yeah, you know, there's going to be a lot of people using it. But it seems like it's just grown even more. I mean, we were I was looking at some counts. And so we're around 500,000 users a year on the Razorback Green. 500,000. Yeah, man, that's astounding. I mean, that's a lot of that's a lot of use. A lot. And it's only going to increase, right, as you offer more connectors into the main spine of of the the greenway and then as more people move to this area yeah i mean i think it should as we continue to build out the network our goal is to have a trail within a half a mile of every house or resident in fayetteville and so we're working toward that because nobody really wants to load their bikes up on the bike rack and and go through all of that to drive to a trailhead when they could go from their driveway you know potentially so it's still going to be some low volume streets like in their neighborhood because we can't bring a trail, you know, into every neighborhood. Sure. But, but if we can get to those neighborhoods and then connect that to the trail system, then it really opens up the the network of ability to, to get there. Yeah. So and just for for the perspective of somebody that might be listening to this, because, again, we have people that are listening that are thinking about moving to northwest Arkansas. So it it might be hard for them to imagine. But current day right now, today, when we're recording this podcast. How many miles of trails do we have just in Fayetteville alone? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. We have 51.5 miles of paved. That's the shared use paved trails, which are going to be 10 or 12 foot wide. So that's not even including the mountain bike trail and all the hiking trails. So that's the paved trails, what what I focus on. So 51 and a half. So we were excited when we crossed the 50 50 mile mark and then... We're continuing at a pace of about two to three miles every year. Okay. If we, we, we try on, uh, that's our goal. And with some of the plans that I've seen looking at the kind of the corridor of Fayetteville specifically, and, and again, what we're seeing in Fayetteville is happening with some of your peers in Springdale, 
and Rogers and Bentonville. So not to worry, anybody that lives in those areas, you're going to get your oh, fair yeah. share of trails. And I've ridden them all the way up to Bentonville. I mean, I can, you can basically, I can get on the trailhead on the Neokoska Creek Trail by my house, and I can take that trail all the way up to Crystal Bridges and beyond. I can go all the way up to Bella Vista. I can almost go up to the state line to Missouri. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, literally. That's actually a goal to continue it up to, to Missouri. So. Right. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's that allows you, I mean, you can almost do like for bikers, a lot of bikers, you know, if you go, if you say, oh, I've done a century or a hundred mile ride, a lot of bikers like to do that, especially on the weekends around here. And so you can pretty much do that on the trail system right now. Yeah. Yeah. I think I mean, you could. Yeah. That is it's definitely over a hundred miles. So yeah, yeah, that is definitely an option. So, and, and, and you can do it safely, which is, I know something again that, that you're excited about. So let's talk just a little bit about you know, how you are incorporating the trail into these different communities. Because I, I, again, you, you mentioned it earlier that I know there is potentially pushback because, you know, sometimes eminent domain issues come up, things of that nature. How do you guys deal with that? And how, you know, if somebody lives on what would potentially be a great trail way, how do you interact with, the, you know, the locals to help them kind of see the bigger picture of what this really means? Because I think it, and I don't know if you guys have done studies, but I would imagine that it, it brings more property. It, it brings more value to your property. You know, I think because just telling people that I live like less than a quarter of a mile from two amazing trailheads, that to me is an incentive and not a detraction. Yeah. And that is what we're seeing with the studies of uh, appraisal. We actually on the Neokoska Creek Trail, since we're talking about that, one of my favorite trails too, by the way, it, it did involve a lot of a property acquisition. I okay. mean, there, those are it goes across what were private properties. Now, it also is area that's part of the creek. And so it tends to flood. Yeah. And so it's not a good place to build a house right. or any buildings yeah. of anything. So it's it's not, you know, the most valuable property to the property owner, but it is for a trail. And so we kind of just work with them really closely. I, I talk to them all and, and meet and, and look at it and like, here's, it's going to be right here. And right. we can do this. What, what would help? You need privacy. We could plant some we plant some vegetation in cases, a privacy fence, things like that, just to help maybe make them feel more comfortable. Wow. But overall, they, they come around and then when we pay for the fair value of what it would cost, you know, for the property, and then we can put the trail through. And even if you have to go, like I noticed that you had to go over some people's original driveways. And so you would redo those for them, right? Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. We can redo their driveway and kind of fix it and get it right for the trail to cross. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and oh, I was going to say about the appraisal. Um, we had an appraisal done on one of those properties that it came back that it would actually, the trail was going to raise the value of their property. Absolutely. And it yeah. showed that. Yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. But I mean, I, I do know that that might be on the minds of some people where they're like, oh sure. my gosh, you know, the trail, or maybe they're worried about there's just going to be all this increased traffic. And if nothing else, it just creates more awareness and it just, you know, you have more fluency of, of movement in your area. So, you know, there, there are some other benefits. If if you have a house that's on the greenway in some way, shape or form, you know, it's hard for, I mean, it's, your house is probably safer because people are, that's an active way. People are, see what's going on. They see what's happening. So there's a lot of, a lot of, I could, I could sell it a million different ways. So mm -hmm. I know that there are a lot of benefits to that. You guys are currently working on some really unique implementation of the trail system downtown with the arts corridor. How is that coming together? And is that, was that, when you heard about that, was that something that you were really excited about? Yeah, very excited about that, especially, you know, south of Center Street where we have what's being called the Lower Ramble. Yeah. Now it's kind of the, the Ramble. But to use those woods along the trail corridor and really make it more accessible to people to enjoy getting rid of the invasives and enhancing the, the vegetation there. And that's an older section of the Razorback Greenway through there, what we call the Frisco Trail. Right. I think it was built in 2004. Okay. And so, and it's asphalt and the asphalt has some issues. So it's a real good opportunity to go in and replace that with concrete trail, like the rest of our trail system, and just give it a new lights and give it a real nice makeover through through there. So that'll be starting in a couple of weeks, actually, about three weeks. They will be starting replacing that trail through that portion. Okay. Will and that totally shut down the trail in that it section? It will have to okay. close it. Now, we've established a detour on Greg Avenue that we're okay. working on establishing. So it's going to be just a little bit out of the way, but it won't be closed where you can't get through. Right, right. It'd be a detour route. 
Okay. All right. That's cool. That's, and that's not something bad. we've worked real hard uh, for the whole region is to establish not just closing the trail if there's a construction activity or anything like that, that really they have to provide some kind of detour or some kind of safe way to get around that con- during construction. Well, I remember that when they were building the Neocasca, and, and again, it, it just seemed like it, it came up in no time, but we would literally every morning, we would walk it a little bit further. Every time, go and then more. eventually it made its way all the way over to Gully. And I remember uh-huh. that that day when we were able to walk all the way through to Gully Park, and how yeah. we were just like, "Oh, this is great!" Uh-huh. I mean, this is a lot of fun. And and again, you know, I've walked it, I've ran it, ride the bike on it. I mean, it just it just opens up everything for you. So you know, and that's what I'm really excited about is connecting Old Wire to Mission because Mission is another main road. It's it's a main goes out to Goshen, but it comes in. And as it comes right into the heart of downtown Fayetteville there at Lafayette, right now, once you get to Lafayette, I mean, there's really not a lot of places that you can go. You're always going to be on the street. But, you know, having something over there is going to make a huge difference, I think, from a, yeah. from a trail perspective. I'm so excited about that project. Yeah. It, it should be starting late this summer. I've almost finished all the design work. Yeah. And so what it'll be is a 12 foot trail with a six feet of green space, trees, light poles, and then a new curb along the the one side, which will be the kind of the east side. And it'll switch at North Street and then kind of go down to the historic district and kind of end at Maple Street. Okay. Okay. And that is a real nice route for bikes. That is a nice route. Yeah, that is a nice route. Kind of gets off the busier, but runs parallel to Lafayette. Yeah. No, I like that. That sounds like a lot of fun. So how has your landscape architecture background really informed what you do when it comes to the trails? How has that kind of helped you or given you a leg up as far as, you know, being able to come up with really good ideas, not just from a design perspective, but just an understanding of, you know, what these trails should look and feel like? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. On a big part of that, I think, is is sensitivity to the environment, too, and looking at what's going to be the least impact that the Mm -hmm. trail could provide. We're dealing with stream corridors and how to be very sensitive there. And then maybe it can be enhanced, you know, with with certain ways with with vegetation. And so my training in landscape architecture helps guide that. Also, a really important aspect is the human element, you know, how that experience is on the trail. Yeah. It's more than just the paving and, uh, you know, how that experience, whether it's, you know, curves or looking at some, you know, maybe it's a focal around a curve and you can kind of create that experience. And so that training helps. Well, you know, and it's so funny because I actually break, <laughs> I break up the trail into hills. Oh, yeah. Areas where I experience the most, not pain, because I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't mind a hill, but you know, burn. there's some, there, yeah, there's feel the def- burn. you feel the burn. <laughs> there's some cool hills to go down on, but you got to be careful. Like right before you hit Dixon, that hill is like super slopey and mm-hmm. uh, you want to be mindful of that. And then also, kind of where the where the little ramble will be there's a nice little hill there so i kind of liken it to that and then of course my 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 favorite is is going up and over the bridge there right before you hit mount kessler and oh, yeah. it, you know we 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 always race as soon as we mm-hmm. come out of that tunnel we make that left and we go yeah. up and over that hill it's and for those of you that that i don't know what i'm talking about just trust me when you come here you know, let me know. We'll go out riding. I've told anybody that wants to ride on the Greenway, I'll, I'm, I'm happy to give you a tour and, and let you see what it's all about. But I mean, it is it is a lot of fun and it makes for a great Saturday morning or afternoon ride for sure. So how often do you actually get out on the trail to enjoy it yourself? Yeah, I get out, I would say weekly. OK, I do find, though, that I I can't help turn off my my eyes to, to maintenance issues <laughs> yeah. and it's i'm all, i that call it almost hard, a curse though, right because you, you, you almost feel like you got to stop and make a yeah. call to i gotta all oh, look like, here yeah, we got this exactly we got so. some, some glass here i mean it's just things you know are no. broken a little something or another yeah, <laughs> so well it's like I'm an artist looking. it's like an artist looking at their canvas i mean you constantly want to improve it so you know i mean that's just yeah, the way the that best it, is. it can be yeah absolutely so so let's talk just a little bit about how the systems integrate and this, the trail system integrates between cities because the one thing I will say about the trail that I've experienced is that it's not a huge, you know, I haven't experienced a drop off going from one city to the next. It's just more of the topography than anything else. But, you know, when I hit the Greenway and I come up through Lake Fayetteville and I come around and, you know, before you know it, you're in Springdale. The only reason why I know I'm in Springdale is because of the street the, where the main 
where the main uh, greenway is. But then once you get to downtown Springdale, it's just like, I mean, it could be, we could be downtown Fayetteville. Like you, there's no difference. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad you have that experience. We do work to to standardize, you know, the the look and the feel and the width, the width, the standard 12 feet wide concrete surface. Yeah, and the development of the greenway whenever that came through, we took a lot of effort to make sure everybody was getting the same kind of design so it would feel pretty seamless. And I wanted to mention about 2 years ago, the the region created what's called the Razorback Greenway Alliance. Okay. And that has one member of every city that the Greenway passes through. And we meet monthly and we meet more as we need to. But a big part of that goal is to keep that standardization of the Greenway as it goes through to different communities, you know, and also just keeping it a world-class facility. Yeah. And so those are our goals. We're right now working on a brand rebrand of it that's going to have new signs that and kind of a new little look for the signs. And also we're going to have some fun all the like, way throughout what I see in Bentonville. Greenway. I'll see in faith. Same. It's going to be like, a, there's still some little nods to the different cities. Like mm-hmm. it'll be a little bit different color yep. that you'll, you'll know you're in a different city, but it also at the same time feels the, the same. So, yeah. And then we're going to have some fun swag, uh, you know, water bottles and oh, cool. jerseys and all kinds of stuff with the new logo. So that we're hoping to have that kind of a soft launch May 7th for the Square to Square oh, event. OK, well, yeah. And I will definitely um, post about that because, we, you know, we like to share with obviously we used to deal with bike. We, well, we've dealt with Bike NWA, now Ethic and so many other organizations that are here locally. That's the, that's the other thing. I mean, people listening to this podcast. If you're not from here and you're thinking about moving here and you even remotely like cycling, you're going to love cycling once you move here because there are so many organizations, there's so many nonprofits, there's so many people that are just really amplifying the importance of a bike culture, right? I mean, so you're doing it from your perspective. There are other people out there doing it from their perspective, like Ethic and others that are really making a tremendous difference for this community as a whole that is becoming you know, it's like I told you, I said, we had an individual on this podcast. His name is Brian Squire, and he and his wife, Dina, moved here during the pandemic, bought a house sight unseen, and are truly two-wheel bike dependent. And they absolutely love it. So whatever you've created, whatever you've done is working because people are now saying, you know what, we could move here and live and not, maybe never even have to get in a car. Yeah, it's pretty amazing to come to that point, you know, hearing <laughs> them be able to do that. Yeah, and and, yeah. and I know not everybody's going to want to give up their car. Yeah. I, I get that. But it, it, there is something to be said for that and the simple fact that, you know, in, in, in the very near future, you know, especially east to west, you're going to have more connectivity through the trail system that you could think twice and say, well, do I need to drive my car or can I get on my bike or my e-bike? And go wherever I need to go. So exactly, it's yeah. provi- it's providing that option. Yeah, you know, a safe option. Exactly, exactly. Now, me, I'm a sweater personally. So if I'm out there, like you know, when the weather turns here, it turns and it gets hot. Mm, and so July. I pretty much need a shower anytime I get on my bike in the summertime. But maybe if I got an e bike, I wouldn't have to expend as much energy if I was just going for a meeting or something like that. But we'll see. I'll I'll have to cross that bridge when I get there. So so speaking of the different cities. What can you tell us just briefly, if anything, about like, you know, plans in Bentonville versus Rogers or Springdale? Or are you guys all kind of on the same page when it comes to the expansion of the Greenway with the understanding that you've got the main spine of the trail already in place? So is every are your peers in the different cities doing what you're doing now to kind of just connect the dots throughout the area? That's exactly right. Okay. Yes, they are. Yeah. And so, yeah, they're able to focus on their own networks and their own, they all have their own master plans like yeah. Fayetteville. But yeah, we have the spine. And so it's, it's branching off from there in the east. Like you said, mostly east and west directions because the north south is, is kind of established. They all have pretty, pretty good crew, you know, groups of working toward all of the same goals of getting these trails on the ground really making good rogers i got to tour their rail yard loop mm-hmm. that's it's a beautiful. great one to check out yeah it is nice it's really yeah. nice so bentonville's got a, a lot going on with the walmart headquarters right, right. now but yeah. whenever everything's finished there it's going to be spectacular through there too and so. the cool thing about bentonville is that if you're a mountain biker and you i mean you you're up in bentonville you can oh, pretty man. much take the trails to any of the mountain, mountain bike trails, trails. yeah period. like and there's so many yeah, yeah there are so many it's crazy so i can't wait until 
there's some type of connectivity either between Kessler and Centennial in Fayetteville or between just the south of town and Centennial Park so that you can kind of get over there and and get, you know, without having to get on like MLK or something like that and ride on the road that way. So, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, and the Fayetteville Traverse is a mountain bike tr- soft surface trail right, that does right. connect the two. Right? Yeah. And okay. it's open right so now. So there is some options. There is yeah, some options. You can follow that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'll be sure to put a link to the current map that you guys have out that you just released a couple of weeks ago. Okay. And, and I'm, and hopefully uh, as time goes on that you'll release more of those. I wanted to end up our conversation just talking about something that I know is important to you. And again, because I ride the trails all the time, I see it flouted and we run into problems from time to time and that's safety, right? So let's be clear on the trail. What are the, what is the current rules, standing rule for riding on the trail? Sure. I guess, first of all, we do have a posted speed limit of 15. Right. So... You know, we I will we say I've gone that. over that a few yeah. times, but that's you know, <laughs> in, in a careful way. But yes. Okay. Yeah. If you got it wide open. Yeah. You know, no one's around. But it's more of just a courtesy. If there are people, you know, walking there, giving warning when passing, sure. it, it can be kind of startling to somebody walking. They're like, oh, my gosh, I didn't even see that bike come up behind yeah. me. Yeah. We stripe all of our trails with a center stripe and the region does, too. Yep. And that that's for a reason. It's a two way facility. And so. You know, when passing somebody, making sure no one's coming straight head on at the same time. Right. And, you know, and stay, so we stay right and give, give warning when passing. Something else that's really important is with the e-scooters that we have is not parking those right in the trail, you know, parking them right off on of the, the trail. trail. Right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I'm like, this it's is like, not a good place to park. No, <laughs> no. Are we going to see more like locations where e-scooters and maybe e-bikes can be put as opposed to? Because now a lot, it's kind of a free for all. Like you'll go to certain places, like even at Gully Park now, they've got a little area where the e-scooters sit and I don't see them that often just littered all over the place. But you go to other parts of the city and Mm -hmm. it's not, you know, especially downtown. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's just a little bit more of a challenge. Yeah. We've been trying to create more parking spots and and it may come to a point where it's forced parking. The university is doing that now with with the scooters is forced parking. So you actually could not park it on a trail. You would have to have it. All of those are controlled by GPS, so sure, they know sure. where they are. Okay. And so it may come to that. It takes away some of the ability to just ride up to where you, whatever your destination is. Right, and park right. and get off and you're there. So you'd have to park at more centralized locations and things like that. But it may come to that. Well, Ozark Natural Foods, shout out to them at the yeah. corner of Lafayette and College. They built, they built a really nice location where e-bikes, e-scooters, and you can sit there and wait for the bus stop. It's all right there. And a shout out to Ozark Natural Foods because they've even set something up where if you ride a bike or an e-scooter or anything on two wheels up to the to the co-op, they they have a gift for you. You can go in and get something to drink and some other stuff. So, you know, there's some benefits to that. And I think more you're going to see more organizations and businesses that are going to support the trails in that way where they offer something to people that are on their bikes or or riding on a scooter as opposed to getting in a car and having to go somewhere. So, I mean, it, it's part of the greening of America, or if nothing else, the greening of Northwest Arkansas. So, you know, I think, I, I think it's a great option. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Why not? So uh, any last thoughts that you want to leave our listeners with? You've got an audience here of people from all over. You've got people that are moving here, plus a lot of people that already live here. Maybe one little tidbit of information that they wouldn't be aware of about the, about the trails that we didn't already talk about. Yeah, I would just encourage them to check out our maps. We have a lot of maps online at Fayetteville-AR.gov for Fayetteville. We'll also, put that in the show notes. Northwest Arkansas. Okay, yeah. And so, and just to get out and explore what we have to offer in Northwest Arkansas is just incredible with our trails. And uh, just I want people, and we've got spring weather coming up. And, That's it. Yeah. Uh, so be amazing. So two questions. Is there a feedback email for you guys as well as for the Razorback Greenway Alliance with regard to like users giving you guys input or are you guys doing that at all? We on our lo- online on our City of Fava website, we do have a report of concern or okay. anything like maintenance concerns for sure. feedback. If you think you see my email's always online as well. Yeah, reach we'll out put to the, me at any yeah, time. We'll put that in the show notes too. So yeah. if anybody wants to reach out to Matt directly and give him some feedback or just say, hey, thank you so much for working so hard to create this this trail system that's really, I mean, it it is um 
I won't even call it a diamond. It's a diamond. It's not even a diamond in the rough because it's already fleshed out. But I can't, you know, in another 10 years, it's going to be insane. I mean, people are going to come from all over in this country as we become, we try not to be as car dependent and people are looking to other alternative means of transportation, i.e. bikes, et cetera. They're going to come looking to Northwest Arkansas to see what you guys have done. So, yeah, it's just exciting to be part of it. It oh. is. It is. So got a great, great community. Matt Mahalovich, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. We appreciate you sharing your story, for telling us a little bit about the Greenway and what we can expect and, and what we can already experience right now. Continue to do the great work that you're doing as the trails coordinator for the city of Fayetteville. And uh, we look forward to connecting with you in, in the future. And I will say this, I'm going to tease this out there now that I Am Northwest Arkansas is going to do a group ride somewhere on the trail. I'm not exactly sure where, but I, we're getting pressure to do this. So we're probably going to try to do one in the spring and the fall of each year just to kind of get people oriented. So if you're new to the area or if you are just a fan of I Am Northwest Arkansas, we would love to have you come out and be a part of that. So listening to this particular episode, if you see that, make sure you subscribe to our newsletter. That way you'll know when we do our group ride and we'll also push it out on social media. But we want to, we want to just a, a bunch of people to join us on the trail to really take in all the great stuff that, that Matt and his team have put together that we should be appreciating on a regular basis. That sounds great, Randy. Yeah, perfect. Well, thank thanks. you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure to share about what we're doing with our trail system. Absolutely. Well, folks, there you have it. Another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. We hope you enjoy that. We will be back next week, Monday, rain or shine, with another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. We'll see you soon. Peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.